Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Choi and today I'm going to teach you how to draw cubital fossa on your own body. Alright, let's check it out. Okay, so I'm going to use my own elbow region, okay, to um, demonstrate on you and to, under to make you understand more about the cubital fossa. So cubital fossa, as you know, is a triangular depression at the anterior part of the elbow. So let's say I give some resistance to the uh, to my elbow regions here. So you can see that here, yeah. So here there's a triangular depression here. Okay, so now first of all, let us understand more about the boundaries of the cubital fossa okay so here is one of the bony prominence here so that is belongs to the humerus bone and at the anatomical position this is at the level of little finger so here i'm going to mark it down and this will be your medial epicondyle okay medial epicondyle of the humerus bone you have one medial moving towards the lateral side there's another one more bony prominence here so here as i mark here so this will be your lateral epicondyle so you have one medial epicondyle and you have another lateral epicondyle here so i'm just going to join okay these two together and this is an imaginary line that joining medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle and this will be one of the boundaries for the um for the cubital fossa so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to give some resistance uh for the elbow flexions and you can see that this muscle is elevated correct okay see so this muscle is ele elevated so this is actually one of the boundaries for the uh cubital fossa which marked by the muscle called brachial radialis okay it's a brachial radialis muscle so this is a brachial radialis muscle all right next thing about the anterior compartment of the forearm okay we have three layers okay so the first layers we have four muscles which i'm going to mark it here like this so do you still remember the four muscle of the anterior compartment of the forearm the most superficial muscle which consists of flexor carpi ulnaris palmaris longus flexor carpi radialis and this will be your pronator teres and all these four muscles it has the common origin which is at the okay medial epicondyle okay common flexor origin okay so these are the four muscles so this one i mentioned so what are these muscles here so this is the pronator theory so if i remove the rest so this one will mark the boundaries and are the boundaries for the cubital fossa so this is your pronator theories muscle all right so these are the boundaries of the cubital fossa so now the next thing is we have to know is the contents so these are the boundaries we have four main contents of the cubital fossa and what are they so number one so number one here okay we have one more we have one nerve here so this is what we call by median nerve okay the first one from the medial side yeah from the medial side this is medial epicondyle the, from the medial to the lateral the first structure is median median nerve now the second one is this one okay this one okay marked with red and this is your brachial bra brachial artery so this bracket artery will let will later divided into the ulnar artery and also the radial artery. Then the next one is this. Okay, we have another one more structures here. Okay. So this is your bicep tendon. Okay, so this is the bicep tendon. And the last one here, okay. The last one here, this is the radial nerve, okay, radial nerve. So you can see that from the medial to the lateral, 
the content of the cubital fossa is MBBR, median nerve, brachial artery, bicep tendon, and radial nerve. If we start with nerve, we end with nerve. So these four are the main contents of the uh, cubital fossa. So we have boundaries, we have contents. The next thing is the floor, okay? The floor of the cubital fossa, okay? So the floor, we have we have two, okay, where we can divide it into medial side and the lateral side. So the medial side here, okay, the floor that make up the medial side, medial part of the floor of the cubital fossa is the brachialis muscle. And the lateral side, okay, the, the muscle that form the lateral floor of the cubital fossa is supinator. supinator muscle supinator muscle okay this is the brachialis muscle this one is the supinator muscle next okay we have done with the boundaries four contents two muscle which form the floor of the cubital fossa another important thing is the is the roof okay what covers the entire cubital fossa so with that okay so there are a few structures which forms the roof that covers directly on top okay the topmost layers is of course is the skin correct now you remove the skin so what is under the skin under the skin is the superficial fascia yeah superficial fascia and at the layers of the superficial fascia it, it, it has a few structures that is in these layers okay the one i mark triangle is actually the cubital fossa and what are on top of the cubital fossa is these few structures here so what here you can see there's a h h shape structures so actually this is the superficial vein okay so this is the medial side so the medial side is the basilic vein yeah basilic vein is at the medial side bm yeah bahasa melayu basilic vein at the medial side so mid this is basilic vein the lateral side you have the cephalic vein and joining these two is the median cubital vein okay so this is where this is the nerve that you always do a venu puncture okay there are another two more cutaneous nerve yeah cutaneous means skin okay cutaneous nerve that uh, lies at the layers of the superficial fascia first we have at the medial side of course you have the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm another one you have the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm so these are all the structures that lies at the superficial fascia which forms the roof of the cubital fossa okay so underneath the cube superficial fascia okay of course covering on top here is the deep fascia okay and then now we remove the deep fascia okay that is the way we expose the uh, manage to expose the cubital fossa but there's one more uh, structure here which forms the roof for the cubital fossa it's actually a uh, aponeurosis of what we call by bicipital aponeurosis okay so this is actually the aponeurosis okay of the bicep brachy muscle okay so this one so you after we remove this aponeurosis then we will clearly see all the structures all the contents the flaws and the boundaries of the cubital fossa all right so with that i hope that it make you um, understand about the cubital fossa better so i strongly encourage you, you to draw in your own uh, hand as well and that's all from me today thank you